You're welcome. Let's get things off with the latest as far as uh, the ongoing political tussle in River State is concerned. It's been a whirlwind week uh, of flurry of activities, of chaos and commotion. It's more about the more you look, the less you see. Once you close your eyes and you think you've seen it all, as far as the politics of River State is concerned, you get to be shocked. Of course, the shocking one yesterday was the demolition of the River State House of Assembly. The entire thing was brought down. Some would say, well, if you look at the politics of the day or at play, maybe Governor Sim Fubar didn't have a choice than to do something drastic to save his political future. But hey, we're talking about democracy here, and others think that the sanctity of democracy um, has been affected. Well, our correspondent, Nia Moni, has been in the River State capital, Fort Hackett, you know, gathering information, reporting for us. And tonight, we had a live interview right here on New Central TV with a former governor of River State, Sir Rufus Ada George. He's the oldest living elected governor of River State at the age of 83. We will play that interview very soon, but uh, yesterday, the Lagos State Governor, Mr. Babajide Sawundu, presented a budget proposal of 2.24 trillion naira for the 2024 fiscal year to the State House of Assembly. He christened it a budget of renewal, saying the proposal uh, compromises or comprises uh, 1.02 trillion recurrent expenditure, representing 45% of the total budget and 1.2 Two trillion naira capital expenditure representing 5.5 percent of the budget. Governor Sobolu also says the 2024 appropriation proposal will further cushion the effects of the removal of subsidy on petrol and other economic hardships being faced by the people of Lagos. Now, let's look at some of the figures um, in that budget. Do we don't have a copy? Still waiting for a copy to be uploaded to the government's website and then the budget office website of Lagos State. But revenue projection is put at 1.84 trillion naira. We have a total internally generated revenue figure of 1.25 trillion naira. A total federal transfer of 5.96, uh, 596.6 billion naira. We have deficit financing of 398.2. Eight three billion naira. Now, under the recurrent expenditure, we have seen that's a recurrent expenditure of one point zero two one trillion naira. We have a total overhead cost of five hundred and twenty seven point seven billion naira. Of this, we have three hundred and four point seven billion naira being overheads, one hundred and twenty three point zero one billion naira being subventions and 100.02 billion naira being dedicated funds. Now, what about personnel cost under recurrent? Personnel cost is put at 3.19, uh, 319.2 billion naira. Uh, recurrent debt service is put at 174.9 uh, billion naira. All this under recurrent expenditure of 45%, about 45% of the budget. Now, under, under CAPEX, as capital expenditure, which is approximately 55% of the budget. Uh, that's a figure of 1.22 trillion naira. Uh, you have a capital expenditure figure of 856.3 uh, billion naira. Repayments, on the other hand, are taking 367.8 uh, billion naira. I'd like, to, I guess, to tell us the difference between those repayments and the servicing. All right, we begin the conversation with uh, Lester Wilcox, uh, who's a former chairman of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria uh, and the Lagos State District Society. Alisa, it's good to have you again on the program. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. I'm with you now. Uh, what are your impressions um, of this budget? As far as you're concerned, I mean, it's called Budget of Renewal. Does it live up to its name? <laughs> Well, um, it's like uh, the, the, the renew hope by a mantra of the, of the federal government is now uh, permitting to every state. So everybody is talking about renewed hope. Uh, our hope has never been dampened in Lagos State. 
um, most Lagosians believe strongly in the uh, in the leadership architecture of Lagos and the delivery of service. If it has said uh, projects of further consolidation, it will have been make it will have been it will have been more um, appropriate than you need to. No, there is no hope lost in Lagos State. We already we are, we, are, we are in tune with Lagos, and we we can see development here and there in Lagos. We can see. Uh, uh, some positivities about Lagos, I mean, and that the economy of Lagos is growing by leaps and bounds that attracts people from every part of the world. But having said that, uh, I'm taken aback at the size of the budget. Uh, it looks like um, there's not a rat race to so have big size budgets, even though your projections and revenue uh, projections are not as far with such expectations. Um, oh. I'm looking at, if, I, if you consider last year budget, Performance was about 78%. I think we had about 1.3, 1 1.6 trillion dollar, uh, 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 1.6 trillion naira of last year budget, and we're not able to implement 100%. And now you are expanding. You are now expanding the the budget size to 2.2 trillion naira. So, and they're looking at deficit and that loan of almost 400 billion, where you're going to use almost 200 billion to service existing loans. So are we? I, I don't know the kind of uh, mathematics or accounting that we are doing with respect of public finances. All right. Uh, uh, it's quite interesting. You said that uh, it seems that governments, both at the federal and state level, uh, seem to be on a race to outdo the, themselves and have a, 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 a bigger budget than they've had. But some could argue that because of the huge devaluation of the Naira, um, you need to up the budget to be able to take care of expenses because of inflation. Oh yes, so um, inflation is part. Yes, I, I I agree in that aspect. That is why I will have looked at. I mean, the last year budget, you you are not able to perform hundred percent. So, and your projected revenue is one point eight trillion. One point eight. So so, what is the rationale in not sticking around that? That in not sticking your your budget around that? I mean, we we know how. Um, Goods and services priced in government circle. Um, it's priced with a lot of embellishment of, corrup of corruption embedded in them. And so the price you pay, it's covered as only in Nigeria that you use almost uh, 500 million to 1 billion to build a kilometer of road. World standard is not, it's never like that, even without inflation. Now, with inflation, you can, you can understand what it will be. So there's a lot of uh, the functionality within governments and it cuts across every government. Lagos State is not excluded. I mean, we saw some of the expenditure that Lagos State embarked upon when certain information came to fore. And you're talking about nine million for grants for the governor and some other obnoxious um, things. I agree that Lagos State is a state, a big state, in fact, bigger than most countries. In fact, the size of Lagos is bigger than some four or five countries put together in the West African sub region. Um, so I believe that uh, Lagos can do better. Yes, uh, there's no doubt that the, the size of the budget is still, the size of our income, the income generation is still low, far lower than the the the, the actual uh, project, uh, the actual performance that it should be. But for me, I think it's time to have a balanced budget. All right. Not all the time uh, having a deficit budget and being financed by debt, and then we are think we are making progress. No, we should ramp up revenue. And spend what we can generate, and just stay within the, just stay within our means. Oh, interesting, Alistair. Uh, the budget, you know, prioritizes, as we can see, capital expenditure uh, over recurrent expenditure. You have a 45, about 45 percent uh, uh, recurrent, and about 55 percent capex. Do you think this is the right approach for Lagos at this time? Being used to recurrent being higher than capex, you know, in government budgets. Well, at the federal level, uh, a recurrence is always higher than the capital. But at the most states, in order for them to have a lot of, uh, uh, so to say, promises of project, even though they will not implement, they they seems to up their capital, their capital side of the budget. Uh, will this perform? For me, it's not the budget; it is the performance. What is the performance of last year capex? So that that should benchmark what we are doing. Yes. Uh, there's no that uh, there's no there's no guessing that there is a lot of infrastructure gap within the country. Lagos is not an exception, 
and Lagos have embarked on very gigantic projects talking about the Green Line. Well, I think the Lagos Lagos talking about the first mainland bridge. These are capital intensive. Uh, uh, these are very heavy, huge capital intensive projects that will need a lot of funds or capital at the so reflecting that in the budget is not out of place. It is still not that sufficient. Sincerely, if it was 40, 60, we can be having a discussion. Because the current expenditure is where you have more profligacy in governance, where you have all kinds of um, all kinds of things, with flying, travels, consultancies, the visits, and all those, those conferences, seminars, and so many things. That's where you have it. You have it embedded. And so one will expect that uh, judicial management of resources, um, value for money uh, in, the of, in, in the users of resources should, should come to play. I, I don't see that happen. It should just be the same. The civil servants and the bureaucrats that are going to bring this budget, they're already happy. They're already looking out for the cost that they will all have. So this is our, the circle. If we really, really uh, put one point, uh, I mean 1.8 billion, no, 1.8 trillion into Lagos judiciously, both capital and recurrent, and it is done judiciously with 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 very sound value for money uh, propositions. I think we'll see far more better developmental services than we're going to see even if the budget size is three trillion. And we are, and we have this kind of um, mentality and attitude right. towards public finance. Very interesting point you raised, Alistair. You sound pretty optimistic uh, about the you know prospects of a less uh, um, uh, diversion of funds when you have a higher capital budget, but uh, capital expenditure. But some could argue that, you know, some of these governors have formed the habit of embarking on big capital projects that seem to be um, over bloated in terms of the cost. You know, the history of uh, all the stories you've heard of the comparison of, uh, you know, asphalting a road in Nigeria compared to, say, Benin Republic or maybe Cameroon or other parts that we spend far more. Um, don't you think that the, the capital expenditure subhead is also an avenue for fund diversion and lack of accountability, direct transparency, and, and corruption? Yeah, so certainly, you are, you are not far from the truth. And I've just made, made, made mention of that. The, in Nigeria, it used, almost, uh, it used to be 500 mil, uh, million to 1 billion per kilometer of road. And so I, you, you, can, you can imagine that for each kilometer of road that is built, some, some very good, some, some government officials and politicians as went to the bank, they could build estates, I mean, with the, with the, with the, with the assets that is. So we have this, that challenge. And, um, so, and that's why I, I made the point uh, in my last, in my last uh, statement, if 1.8 trillion Naira is judiciously, I mean judiciously, put into Lagos in one year, Let's even put in 1.8 trillion in both capital and recurrent judiciously and with far less uh, corrupt tendencies of a bloated contract. I'm sure we're going to see far more development. We're going to see far more service delivery. We're going to see far more results than even if the budget is 3 billion. I mean, I mean, it's 3 trillion. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are running a problem. We, are, we have a problem. And that problem is the fact that most of the things that corruption is. Uh, it's only at the federal level. The state and the government are worst because no such light is on them. I'm not in fact that Lagos state is corrupt or the only state that is corrupt, but the cost of services along among governments in all in all states and in even the federal in the federal system is something that uh, should be of worry to every Nigerian. Because if it's your money, if it's my money, will I spend it that way? If it's my money, will I use this amount of money to build a kilometer of road? Will I use the amount of money? To buy office file, well, I the amount of money to buy a car if it is my money. So that that personal mentality should be taken to government so that we have better service. Because look, the challenges are are, are, are much than these funds. Our roads are, are not good. I mean, especially in, in, in internal roads, there are no water supply. There is no good water supply. There is our health care facility is still is still is still, is still is still below par. So if there is judicial use of funds judiciously used and applied to services, I think we'll get far more right. than far more results than what we're having today with all the embedded corruption and all the embedded contracts, uh, 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 in, in inflated figures that we're having today in government service. All right. Uh, uh, thank, interesting, Alistair. Um, 
Governor Babajide Sonwolu uh, pointed out that, uh, first of all, I haven't seen that project proposal. Uh, Lagos State Government is used to putting such things online. Um, I'm going to refresh. Have you seen it, Alista, the full document? No, I've not. I've not, I've not. <laughs> you know. So um, I don't know what the delay is. Um, it's not what we're used to. I'm sure we're used to having this thing you know, in good time. Uh, I'll, I'll refresh the, as I'm here, I'm still refreshing the Lagos State Government website and the budget, uh, budget Office Economic Planning and uh, Ministries website as well to see if it will drop. Um, but they need to put this, they need to give it to the people. Don't you think so, Alistair? Before the governor even presents, it's a bill. A bill is a public document. Are you, do you, do you share the same well, view? Uh, well, well, I think uh, we don't need to stampede uh, because uh, it is just being presented as an assembly yesterday. And uh, a budget document is not a two-page paper. I'm sure it's uh, it's a document that that must be in some large volume. So let's give them benefit of doubt. And uh, the document is the is the is the proposal. Now let's allow the legislator to do a thorough midwifing of the of the of the process of the document and come up with a clean copy that will be. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, whatever the government presents. For me, it makes right. it's, 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 it's of little consequence. But what I should expect is what the assembly will finally agree to, and then when right. the, docu then the document is signed into a law, then we can start having a, a, a more robust com com conversation as to what the figures are. All right. Alistair, we, 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 we have so much more to talk about as far as this budget is concerned. So we'd like to have you back, but I want to thank you very much for your time and for your incisive analysis as always. Thank you so much. It's always my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. It's our pleasure. Okay.